I want you to think about this object here. When I ask people if they know what it is, they always say no. But they'll say, I see it's a screen, yes. It's metal, yes. It's silver, yes. But do you know what it means? No. So then I ask, are you in the habit of buying things when you don't know what they mean or used for? And they say no. So what's happening is they have the physical objects, but they don't have the meaning. And so they're not interested. Then I ask, in my bag, I have a, uh, uh, some medication that's been uh, passed every uh, possible institute regarding um, the, the quality of this uh, medication, and it's been tested for 20 years. It's been used in Europe. What it does, actually, it slows the aging process by 30%. And it, you can buy it for $10 a month, and would you like to have some? And they said, well, gee, I just had a woman pull a checkbook out. Ah, I was having fun, you know. So, wait a minute. What just happened? Now, she doesn't see anything. But she heard of what that means. She'll buy it. Hmm. What does that tell you? It tells you we buy the meaning, not the object. The objects in life are here to... Uh, uh, represent meanings that we ascribe to them. Props. Objects are props. And it's as if we are here playing out our dramas of life. And we use props to uh, express our identities that conform to who we are. They're props. So in sales, I was never concerned about the object. I was only concerned about generating meaning. What will this do for you as an individual that will help enhance uh, your identity? And that's how I sold. Uh, I didn't worry about benefits. I didn't worry about the object at all, what it does. I didn't care. I told them what it did, but that's not the issue. Why? What really do they need? They need to use this object to express who they are. And that's it. So we use this process constantly, and it seems as if we're designed to do this, where they're designed in two ways, the back of the tool, is there's one half of the brain that is designed to pick up all the physical objects. And that's part of what also they call the stalt. What it is, is we always have a sense of form. We're imposing form on everything we see. That's how you can look at a cloud and you get uh, uh, shapes of animals and people. Well, how is that possible? Because it's just a cloud. Well, that's how the brain works. So the brain understands height, width, depth, everything we engage in on a physical level. Then well, there's another half, which is the mind. And what the mind does now is make it mean something. Mm. What is it? What does it mean? What is it? It's constant. What we it, it happens so fast we put them together. And the meaning and the object become one. But if we split them, we find that they have different functions. And uh, there's also another aspect uh, called isomorphism. Which is just that. You can't have the brain not be in sync with the mind and have me look at this this object here. Oh, this is a lion, right? We don't do that. It sounds silly, but we don't. We have to coordinate the mind with whatever is physically out there. So what I do, getting right back to, right to the question, is I look at the brain as if it's a spacesuit. And you are, as you inside the spacesuit is the abstract. You're going to the moon. You're on the moon. How do you know your environment? Through the spacesuit. 
That's your body. This is all the physical manifestations that you're going to be engaged in. But here, you are going to say, ah, that means this, that means that. And you're going to interpret everything that's outside through the space suit, just like we do our skin and our eyes. And, and so this is how we're actually designed to pick up both. So this side is motivated from what? We understand there's a physical world out here with physical laws independent of us. Mm -hmm. But what's over here that really generates this whole idea? Where do you get meaning? Where is the meaning of the meaning? This is where the authentic is. It's authentic. I use the word authentic because it's the author of who you are. Mm. And what you do is you say, ah, this is me over here. This is the object. And in the middle is choice. And that choice is going to conform to your authentic identity in the act of choosing. And this is the relationship between the object and what it means. And so you have an authentic and synthetic identity. Out here, you're a physical person, and over here, you're an abstract person. Over here, you're a bundle of ideas. No one can open up your brain and say, ah, Mel likes to vacation in Hawaii, because it's not physical. It's an idea. So you are a bundle of conforming abstract ideas. That's your identity. Your, per, your, your persona out here is how you express that identity. So you separate the two, and you find they have two different functions, and there's one that you're going to pay attention to a little more than the other, this side. And you can actually separate out what are synthetic decisions and what are abstract decisions. What will enhance your abstract and uh, uh, identity, and uh, what won't and why you create symptoms in your life, because you're not expressing this authentic side. Mm -hmm. So this is how really the brain is functioning every day. And it has two aspects. And they have a relationship, and it's designed this way, so we have an understanding of the world. Mm -hmm.